what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so i didn't really think i had to make this video but some people asked for it and since this is new uh we're gonna talk about it so tier five pets are now a thing and basically uh, honestly the patch notes tells you but i'm gonna go over some a little bit of additional stuff on how to get your pets and what are some stats you should look for because everyone knows how to like get a pet and everyone knows how to like upgrade a pet if you just read the patch notes but i'm gonna go over what my thoughts and opinions are of certain ones and what you should do like let's say you're a life skiller or all you do is grind and what you should look for so first of all um if you are a new player uh you could probably get a lot of your pets for free i know pets are considered a necessity but also pay to win so first of all let's talk about how you can get them and be careful of what you do because when you look at all these pets um so basically if you just hover over a click any any of it it'll tell you what type of pets there are and like this one is a premium and oh well, actually i think all of these are premium or no some are classic so just make sure you see like is it classic or premium and so you just hover over all of the things and you'll figure it out so once you get into that stage you have all these pets right and honestly a lot of these are from like events and login rewards i haven't bought a pet since i got all mine tier four literally years ago so any of these are probably just from events also you could get them off the market and just go to your uh, I think it's Pearl Shop and Pets. And every now and then when they have events or something out or like discounts, you could just put an order on and sometimes you can get them. Honestly, they're not that bad. You, you might have to put a order on and just wait for it. But if you didn't want to spend any money on this or on pets at all, you don't have to. But in my video I made before of things you should get on the Pearl Shop, these are kind of important, especially if you want to um, speed up things and just not destroy your keyboard. Okay, so anyway, now that we have pets and how to get them done, let's go over certain pets and how to upgrade them. So as you guys already know, certain pets do certain things like this one is hostility detection, gathering item quantity, finds resources, auto fishing. Uh, Honestly, most of them are irrelevant and you probably won't even like use most of them. So the important ones I think are auto fishing, um, gathering item quantity increase, especially if you are a life skiller, having a hedgehog is very important. If you are a PVPer, hostility detection is very important. And if you are like me and just do everything, uh, when I'm not actively playing the game, I'll just set my character to go fishing and just AFK. So that's why I have that. As for finding special resources, that's, you know, I don't use it at all. Um, but it is good for some things. Like, let me give you a special tip that uh, you don't really need to use it, honestly. It's just kind of a thing. So let's say you're out in the desert, right? And let's say you don't have a compass and all your like storage made cooldowns are going off so you're lost in the desert what you could do is you set the special resources on and every now and then if you're near a resource in the desert even though you can't see where your character is if you don't have a compass it'll ping a resource near you so that's why it could tell you where you are so it's that's a little tip that i can give you as a veteran player even though it's like it's not really relevant anymore uh, here, if you're really lost and you don't have a pet, here's how you do it. Find a wallet and hug it, and eventually you'll end up in either Alta Nova or Sand Green Bazaar. And another thing I can tell you is if you are lost in the desert, uh, try to find a portal that goes to Achman or Histria. It doesn't matter. And then if you leave, like you go into Achman and Histria, and then you leave it, there'll be like an NPC. Uh, it just says leave. You'll end up in the... Ilib Ibelab Oasis, and then you just move down to uh, Sandgrain, or you could go to 
uh, Valencia. So if you ever get lost, find a portal, go into it, leave it. You'll end up here 100% of the time. So anyway, that was a little bit off topic, but just in terms of uh, what find special resources actually does. Um, yeah, special or finds rare monsters. It'll ping it if it's like an elite enemy. And yeah. So anyway. For my tier 5, I actually got this one because it's item drop rate plus f uh, 5%. Uh, but at tier 4, is 4%, and this one is 5%, so literally just 1% higher. Um, how do you get a tier 5 pet? This is what you do. You go to Old Wisdom Tree, and then you'll see an NPC. It is this NPC right here. It's an owl, and basically it'll tell you what materials to get. And so what materials do you need? Sealed ma black magic crystals and turn them into magical shards. I think you need about 40 of them. So you can buy these on the market. Not a big deal. Just buy 40 of them, melt it, get the magical shards. Um, then you'll need a few other things that you could buy off the NPC as well. So what you're going to need is fine lightweight plumes. And you're going to need, I think, 800 of them. And if you've ever gone for the infinite mana potion, you'll get soft fairy feathers and then you filter, I think it's filter, whatever one of those process thingy is. And then you get lightweight plumes, you process that even further and then you get fine lightweight plumes. That's how you get 800 of them. Honestly, it's not that bad to get 800 of them or you could just buy them off the market. And let's see, how much would 800 of them be? Uh, four mil times eight, probably like 25 mil. Not, that's not the bad part. The bad part is when you go to an NPC, I don't actually remember which one it was. Uh, anyway, there's an NPC in Grana that will sell you this item that's like 60 million and then you need 10 of them. And then once you get all those materials, you turn them into the OB Owl NPC that we talked about before. And then it'll turn a tier 4 pet that's level 10 already into a tier 5. So let's check in all our pets real quick and I'll show you how it works. So let's see. Once your pet is tier, fe uh, tier 5, there'll be an icon down here and then it'll say, it'll show like a crown. And that's how you get the crown above it and then it'll buff the stats and then you could um take out all your pets set them as one two three four five so you see these like one two three four five icons right here this is how you set presets and if you set them as like three it'll take out every like up to five pets that are into three so with real money always be careful on how you upgrade them this is what we're going to go into now so you go into the exchange and let's say you want to upgrade, I don't know. So you see how these have a premium, event, or rare, or sometimes a classic, I believe. Classic. You can only upgrade pets of the same type. Not like cat to cat, but like if it says event, you can only upgrade events pets. So just keep that in mind when you're either buying them or something. So let me just show you something real quick. Okay, so this is a parrot, right? Um, what you want to be careful of when you're upgrading is what kind of like guaranteed skill they're going to get. So to give you an idea, every time you get a pet, it'll have one guaranteed stat and then RNG stats that you get along with it. So for me personally, I liked gathering a lot back in the day, which is why I'm Guru 12 gathering and Honestly, it does make a difference. You will notice it, but it's not like I didn't min max hard enough to like find perfect um, life skill bonuses. And honestly, all I really wanted was gathering and combat XP. And if I got those, it was pretty good to me. And honestly, if I really wanted to min max it, I could probably just keep re rolling until I get it. Honestly, that's like for the people who really want to min max. As long as you get the right stats and like the important trait they came with, 
like gathering or auto fishing or item drop rate i know people say when they say like arctic fox they really just mean item drop rate so keep that in mind okay anyway off on a tangent a little bit so let me show you how upgrading would work the pet in the main big square is the one that's going to be upgraded so let's take a uh i don't know what do we want corgi and then now we have another corgi and it'll give you a percent to guarantee it and just rng ideally you could 100 percent it but you have to sacrifice a little bit more and that is something that I don't really like to play with RNG on a little. So when I do that, I will always try to get it to 100%. And like, if you had two tier threes, you could get them to uh, 100%. So if you have two tier threes and then like a tier two or something, either way, there is a 100% chance to do it. And then, so let me show you how all this would work. So if you pick appearance, you get to pick one. Now, when you pick the appearance, keep in mind that it not only takes the appearance of the one you picked, but it will also take the guaranteed trait of it. So that means you kind of like, let's say you wanted the bird because it's faster looting or something. You would take the bird. So it's kind of weird how that works, but just know uh, certain pets do certain things, like, for example, um, if we go up to our guaranteed pets, like, if you take, if, for example, a hedgehog was part of this uh, RNG part, if you took the hedgehog, it would always have the gathering item quantity. You can't just sacrifice any of them and have, like, a, I don't know, a dog with special gathering. That just, It doesn't work like that. The things you can change are the skills. Now, if you have multiple like tier threes and there'll be more boxes here to show you that what's available. So uh, let me just get tier fours out real quick to show you. Um, okay, so if you have two tier fours, obviously it's a 100%. It doesn't go any higher than that. And let's say if I chose the polar bear, for example, it would take, um, if I chose the polar bear, it would take the uh, auto fishing guaranteed 100% whereas if I took the deer I don't actually know what this deer does to be honest but anyway when you have certain skills that we picked from the two it'll give you like this is one of them and this is the other one you can't pick and choose but you can um like let's say the polar bear had all of that which I think it actually did uh, you could take that. So to me, honestly, these two stats are good. I don't need luck. You know what's funny? This is going off topic. But luck, I don't know why people buy these fortune lifestones. Like, I actually have no idea why people buy these for 5 billion. Because I guess if you're a new player and you're wondering how to get 5 luck at all times... Okay, so obviously luck is good, but I don't think you anyone should ever need to buy light stones for it. So, um, I don't remember where, but actually, hold on, I do. Uh, let me find it real quick. Titles. Okay, so if you look at this, um, ultimately, you're going to want like uh what's it two luck right two luck over here and level three luck is acquire 150 titles that's the very minimum so just by you know playing the game you could get level three luck just guaranteed right off the bat okay so there's 150 titles by playing the game go grind somewhere play the story you'll get 150 titles easy and so you have three luck guaranteed. How do you get another two luck? Well, your fairy. It doesn't matter what fairy. Even a tier one fairy, it gives you one luck. So that's four luck. And then, you know how many times they've given out costumes? 
this is another luck so that's there's five guaranteed luck and you're set and it's pretty much permanent because uh your fairy assuming you have the right one well no let me rephrase that all fairies give one luck if you have a fairy that like you, what you reroll are the skills this luck is guaranteed 100 percent of the time and then if you have a costume they've given out so many just from events there's another one luck and then just by having a 150 titles you get five you don't even need to spend five billion silver on luck bonuses but it is important to have five it's just why people are spending five billion on it i have no idea uh, just play the game <laughs> so anyway that was like my little rant because i see people are just like oh my god i finally got it and i'm just like just play the game and you got it easy so anyway, that's how we do pets, how to guarantee them. Um, I don't know. A bird and another bird. Also, there's a little thing that's uh, pay to win. Oh, these wizard gossipy things. I don't really recommend buying them, to be honest. They're just like... You know how a tier 1 pet gives like 15% to like upgrade chance right this is like slightly higher but it costs money so i i can't really say i recommend it unless you're just like hard you money is not a problem for you then you could use it but ultimately just like try to get them off the market and then smash them to guarantee tier three and then keep smashing tier threes into a tier four and then you don't even have to spend money it just takes a lot of time so ultimately I would recommend getting a polar bear when that one goes on sale. I don't think you can get that one for silver, neither can you get a hedgehog. So these are cash shop ones, and same with the uh, Arctic Fox or the equivalent of this thing. I got it in a box a while ago. So three out of my five pets are cash shop, unfortunately. But if you are just looking for a tier four and you don't really care about the stats and you just really want it for the looting, which is actually honestly what I would recommend um unless you plan on spending quite a bit of money just get five of them for the auto looting that is number one priority and then after that then you start min maxing your stats um so a few other questions that i've gotten before are aside from does the pet matter matter kinda sorta but ultimately would you rather have five tier one pets or like two tier three or four pets or something the answer is you always want five pets uh you would i think it is actually min max better to have five tier ones than like one tier five or something like that so yeah just keep that in mind um hopefully like some of this information is helpful uh, as a very beginner, low priority, just get five tier pets, tier one pets first. Eventually, if you get more pets or you plan on spending money, um, smash those pets to a tier three, just do the exchange, get the level one, smash another level one together, and then another level one, and then, yeah, you just pick whichever one. And then you could pick the skills, and then you could look at the rates. Honestly, like, if you're a life skiller, uh, if you're a life skiller, this is a little bit harder, but you kind of just want to more or less focus on what you want. Don't get fishing level, don't get gathering level. You could eat food buffs for this. We talked about luck and how to get five of them without spending it. Um. So if you're a grinder, obviously combat XP is pretty important. You don't need karma recovery. If just ask your guild for a karma buff. You don't need that. It's stupid. If you're at some point where you're oh, like, trying to get someone to karma bomb you and whatever, like, grind an hour, do your Marnie's Realm hour, whatever. So I don't think karma recovery is that important. I do think uh, combat XP is high priority. Uh, gathering XP, high priority. And then all of these are equal to me. But whichever one you do.
So mostly want to focus on these two. And then the other one is pretty irrelevant. But if you want to look at what I have, durability, reduction, resistance, 4%. Uh, it's That one, honestly, is irrelevant. I, I just have it because I have combat and gathering and... I guess fishing because when I AFK fish, whatever. Well, I do grind, but like I also have a tent. So if my weapon runs out of durability, who cares? Uh, I do life skilling quite a bit. As you guys can see, I have five, five percent life skill buffs and then more life XP. Uh, but the hedgehog, very high priority for all of you gatherers out there. Um, a rabbit, don't care. Literally because it gave combat and gathering cool farming is like the most irrelevant thing you're better off trying to get something else but i'm not going to spend a reroll it um weight limit weight limit is just weight limit it's always good to have if i were to change something i'd probably try to reroll this hunting and fishing i don't care about too much so and then drop rate drop rate it's always good and then combat and life gathering. So yeah, there's my pets, how to get them, how to get a tier 5 and all that's good stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Drop a quick like if you did. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.